Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my video. Um, just want to tell you guys what happened uh, a couple of days ago with my car. So basically, I just want to tell you guys how I fixed the issue. Um, okay, so basically, I was at a McDonald's getting food. Parked my car, turned it off, parked my car, went to get some food, came up about 15, 20 minutes later, and uh, tried to start it. It would crank up, but it wouldn't turn over. Now, I cranked it a couple of times. And it still didn't turn over. And uh, what I did was I shift the shifter a couple of times and pretty much, you know, did a couple of things as far as trying to start it with with the usual stuff that you guys do when you try to start the car. Uh, try to press the accelerator. Thought maybe it was an issue with any one of those things, but uh, it wasn't. So fine. I uh, wasn't able to start it after, uh, let me see, three, four, maybe three or four uh, tries. I would crank each and every time, but it wouldn't just, it wouldn't start up. So basically what I did was I turned on in my headlights and I went out and uh, turned on my headlights just to check out the battery, just to see whether the batteries were good or not. If the batteries were good, the headlights would be bright. Now, the headlights were, were bright, very, very bright. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that it was something to do with the battery or, or something simple because I don't want to spend money or time on a big fix on the car. So, basically, I turned on the, uh, the lights, went out, checked it out. It was very bright. So, I assumed that it was in the battery. Um, next thing I did was I opened up the hood up, see if there was anything I missed under the hood. And, uh, you know, check the, check the cables to the battery, make sh made, made sure that there was no corrosion or anything like that. And there was no corrosion. Now, I did change the battery about six months ago. I didn't think it was a battery issue. But just to make sure, I had a booster pack on me, got a booster pack, popped it on, and try to, try to start it, turn over. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't turn over, it just crank, it wouldn't turn over. So at that point, I was very, um, at that point, I knew uh, a couple of things, all right? I knew it wasn't the battery because my booster pack was close to 100%, didn't use it after I charged it up about a month ago. So it was at 100%. I uh, tried to turn it on. It did not turn on, did not, uh, it, it did not, it did not turn on. It did not turn over. It cranked, it did not turn over. But uh, I could rule out a couple of things after that. I could rule out the battery being the problem. I grew up the, the alternator being the problem, but I didn't think it was the alternator to begin with. I ruled out the alternator anyway, because normally if it was the alternator, the, uh, your, your your car would have died on the road while the engine was on because the the uh, the alternator wouldn't be charging the battery, and then the battery you know would die, and then your car would die. But putting cables onto uh, the battery would have jump started uh, the the car, and then once you take it off, the, the uh, car would die. Okay, good enough. All right, didn't think it was the battery. Ruled out the battery. Ruled out the alt uh, alternator. Ruled out. Uh, and uh, here's the thing: I also ruled out the ground wire because uh, sometimes if the ground wire is um, it's either loose or not not grounded to the frame properly, where it rusts in the way debris or something like that, uh, it, uh, it would cause a bad connection, and that would cause the uh, Sometimes it would cause to crank but not start. But normally in those situations, uh, the weak connection, the weak connection would cause the car to slow crank and not not start. But thing about it is the car cranked up very strong each and every time. So I didn't think it was the ground wire, but I double checked anyway, just in case. If you guys don't know what the ground wire is, um, the ground wire is the wire. Uh, the, the, the negative cable of your, you know, that connects to your battery. Normally that cable connects to the frame of your car. Uh, you can, you guys can trace it to the frame to see whether there's any kind of rust around where it's bolted on. But uh, I didn't see any amount of uh, evidence that there was, you know, that it was obstructing any kind of uh, electricity, uh, you know, the to... Uh, 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 on the electrical connection. So basically, I could rule out the ground wire, the battery, the alternator, and uh, 
On top of that, um, I uh, thought to myself, well, here's the thing. There was no check engine light. There was no check engine light on a dash. So basically, uh, because there was no en check engine light, I could probably, uh, you know, at that point, I was ruling out like everything else with that had a sensor that would, could be causing this issue. Um, basically, if there was a check engine light, I, I might, you know, obviously, I have an OBT2. I would have... You know, I did actually put in the OBD2, but let me just tell you guys what happened. All right, there was no check engine light. I haven't had a check engine light on this vehicle for the longest time. There was no check engine light when this uh, before this started. So what I did was, um, uh, okay, there's no en check engine light. So everything that could possibly, everything that has a sensor uh, connected to it, uh, the mass airflow sensor, the um, uh, throttle position sensor, the, um, uh, the, the throttle body, <laughs> crankshaft, camshaft, everything that could possibly have a code that would, that could trigger the check engine light. Um, I, I pretty much ruled that out, but I have, I had a, I have a $20 OBD2 reader, uh, that I bought from Walmart. Uh, you guys don't know what that is. It's a, it's a very cheap OBD2 that I got from Walmart Auto Section. Um, uh, popped it in. Uh, you know, another thing that could cause it is if there was some kind of uh, connection issue be between the car's computer and the car itself, the car's ECM, which is the car's computer. So I plugged it in just to make sure that that's not the case. So if, if the scanner scans everything, gives you a readout on a screen that pretty much means that uh, there is a connection from the car to, to the computer because if there wasn't the OBD2 would, would not be reading it it would it would tell you that it, it, it would stop at some point tell you that it could not finish the analysis but it finished analysis it gave me no codes whatsoever um, you know went through everything so basically um, I pretty much ruled out all those other causes that possibly could cause it uh, mass airflow sensor camshaft crankshaft throttle position sensor um, anything else that could cause it I pretty much ruled those out as a result of there not being a check engine light on the dash itself root it root it all out okay so also ruled out the um, the, the computer having issues with connecting to the car where it would just crank up but nothing else would happen as far as firing it up and stuff like that so um root out all those things so at this point um i was like maybe i i i had a, i had a i i knew what it could possibly be i had a guess if i had a guess i i could get a good guess of, give it a good guess of what it could possibly be it could be a fuse uh the ignition uh the fob key the relays so obviously knowing that um i did do uh deductive reasoning deductive reasoning not deductive reasoning but deductive um testing all right so i've got to the fuse box checked out all the fuses there were um you know just to see whether any of the fuses were burnt did not smell any kind of burnt smell the fuses were all seemed to be all good i could not i did not have a um a um did not have a uh, fuse tester with me, so I could not test it out uh, in that way to be 100% sure. So I was looking at the relay and um, thinking it probably maybe could be the fuel pump relay. But uh, before I did that, I did a little test on a fuel pump before I even got to... Um, the uh, fuses and relays. Okay, so basically what I did was I um, I, I tried to listen to, to hear whether I could hear some kind of whizzing sound, okay? Basically, before your car starts, it primes the um, fuel pump. From, it primes the fuel pump from the fuel tank and normally you would be able to hear a whizzing sound, but normally um, what happens is you would turn the car to the on position, which is what I did, and somebody else would be outside right next to the gas cap, and you know when you turn it to the on position, without cranking, 
you know, you'll be listening to, you know, whether you hear any kind of noise or sound or kind of some kind of whizzing sound, motorized sound coming from there. If you do, normally that means that the fuel pump is good. Now, I didn't have anybody with me at the time, so I was sitting in my car, um, had everything off, low motor off, everything off, and pretty much just tried to turn it to the um, try to turn it to the on on position and try to hear it. All right, the on position is the on position before you you, you try cranking. Uh, you know, turn before. You go all the way on, 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 on cranking it up before it starts, you know, try to turn over and stuff like that. Okay, you shouldn't be hearing a crank when it's on the on position. That's when that position is where all the lights light up um, on a dash. So basically, what happened was um, I, 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 I tried to listen to it inside the car with it on the on position and uh, could not hear any difference, could not make out whether there was a priming sound or not so at that point um, I thought to myself alright I'm not going to be able to test it out that way so I got I figured out where the uh, uh, fuel pump relay was and uh, and uh, if you guys don't know this trick just to figure out whether it was the relay uh, uh, you know that, that that's blown or whatever uh, you guys can find another relay, similar relay with the same, uh, you know, numbers, the same exact relay for another component of the, of the car, and then you swap it out. Okay, you can swap it out. So well, that's what I did. I swapped it out, and guess what, guys? Bam! It actually turned on, cranked, turned over, and uh, as soon as it turned over, I knew it was the relay that was the problem. I knew it was the relay that was the problem as soon as it turned over. So at that point, obviously, I found out the culprit of of, of, of the problem. I uh, was able to um, uh, drive to AutoZone. Uh, got the relay, you know, you know, swapped it, you know, swapped it back to the whatever the component that old relay was, and then put a new relay for for the uh, fuel pump, and it cranked up. It cranked up. It just cranked up. It's good. Um, you know, fixed the issue. Haven't had the issue since. So, if you guys are in the same situation where um, your, your car is cranking, but it won't turn over, just go down each and every one of those uh, troubleshooting steps that I went through. Uh, 90% of the time, you should be able to get to why your car would crank but won't start can guarantee I can I cannot guarantee 100% of the time because there is also a couple of variables that you know could be involved as far as you know why uh, your 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 vehicle is, is cranking but not um, not turning over but uh, in this situation I found out what it was fixed it uh, I'm good to go just want to let you guys know uh, you know, I hope this has helped you guys out. If it has, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. Please, um, if you have any comments at all, please leave a comment in the comment section. All right, guys, take care.